Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of A Spot of Science. I'm Gus. I'm Chris. And I'm Sally. So I uh, got a question here. Mm -hmm. It says, hey there. I was wondering if Sally could tell me what... Wait, I'm right here. <laughs> I was, wondering, just me. I was wondering if Sally could tell me, we might have to skip Chris. I was wondering if Sally could tell me what we know about pets' feelings. Does my cat love me? Is there any way to tell whether they're just with us for food or because they like us? Why would a cat choose a favorite human within a house when it gets fed by all the humans? Thank you a lot. Love, Lena from Germany. Lena, does your cat not love you? <laughs> <laughs> it's so much desperation in that question. It's like, why doesn't my cat love me? <laughs> Tell me have it's you ever science. owned a cat, Chris? I have. I have. It was it put up with me. What was your cat called? Uh, just cat. What? You called kitty. your cat cat? I called it kitty. The, it didn't have any like identity issues. It, you it was a cat. Yeah, yeah. It was kitty. Well, because it was one of those things where we just went through a couple of different names and then, then none of them stuck. Dog. So we just went with kitty. Were, were you Sheep. your cat's favorite human? Did that cat have a favorite human? I think so. But I also had the litter box in my bathroom. So it probably enjoyed being in my room so it could poop easily. <laughs> Did you have a cat, Gus? Uh, yeah, I, I had cats when I was growing up. Were you your cat's favorite? Um, we had several cats. There was one cat who I was their favorite. All the other ones, uh, my sister was their favorite. Okay, because you got dogs now, right? I've got dogs now. Hey, well, one of them is definitely... Wait, they both kind of like me, yeah. Are you more of a dog person? Oh, there, there, or... they are. Those are my dogs. <gasps> Oh, adorable. Yeah, so oh, I yeah. love it. They both, they both love me. So are you a dog person or a cat person? Which, which is your favorite? I, uh, I think nowadays I prefer dogs. Okay. Yeah, I think so. So do you have any uh, insight for us, Chris? Do, uh, do, do cats love people? They do love, not uh, platonically. Um, and uh, I think it's because the, the cats who have, um, who live with us, they've been bred in such a way where like we're more likely to bring them into our house and and let them live with us if they're friendly and they show affection and uh and so that's why cats are affectionate and they do love us because we maybe bred maybe, maybe not lena's cat yeah but generally speaking cats love us um what, what's the what's the deal sally well it's really interesting because cats and dogs vary so much which is why i asked you which one you prefer because cats think that we're cats Dogs know that we're humans and that we're not just weird, stupid dogs. Cats think that we're weird, stupid cats. Really? Uh, in the sense that the way that a cat shows affection towards a human is exactly the same as how a cat shows affection towards another cat. Whereas how a dog shows affection to a human is very different to how a dog would treat another dog. So cats don't distinguish their behavior between other cats and other humans, whereas dogs will preferentially seek out humans over other dogs. So dogs, so much better. I am so much a dog person compared to a cat person. Is that why cats will like bite and scratch humans? Yeah, and they will scent mark and rub up against their legs, whereas dogs won't do that. Um, and cats will do that to other cats and they treat them just the same. You've got your hand up. <laughs> uh, to that note. Yes. All right. I've never been humped by a cat. But I've been humped by lots, lots of dogs. Now, if if a dog is going to treat us like humans and not like other dogs, why are the dogs the ones humping us and cats aren't humping us? I I don't think I've ever been humped by either boys. Dogs hump everything. They hump everything, and so it just treats you as another thing. Okay, but why don't cats hump us? In? Uh, because they don't like you. It's it's that is more likely going to be a smell thing. So you dogs when they're on heat, become very sexually attracted towards pretty much everything. Um, and so that's more of a behavior that they will hump anything. Yeah, and I I don't know so much about cats on heat, but I don't think they have that same behavioral response. If dogs want to hump everything, then how do they end up hitting the mark? What like. Okay, you say when dogs are in heat, they want to hump everything. Mm -hmm. And if they're humping everything, why? how is it, isn't it likely? That, I mean, how? Because they're not humping everything to the same frequency or extent. They, they just... are even more likely to hump a dog in heat than <laughs> a random table leg or you. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah. It's, it's not that they're doing it to the exclusion of humping other dogs. Yeah, okay. 
They will also have... But interesting thing about dogs. So we have been co-evolving with dogs for the last 30,000 years, which is a long time. And there was a study that came out recently, which was like Labradors, which we think of as one of the most intelligent animals. The most... uh, The dog breed most uh, motivated by food. Hmm. So that's pretty much why they're so easy to train because they're bloody greedy little things that Hmm. just want the food and will do anything to get more food. It's, yeah, it's crazy. What's even crazier is that they've managed to train dogs to be able to sit in an FRI machine. So these are these humongous um, cylindrical machines where you have to keep your head perfectly still and they will strap it into blocks to make sure like humans don't like going in MRI machines because there's mm-hmm. loud beeps and everything and there are these adorable videos of dogs <laughs> being trained to stick their head just in this uh, MRI machine perfectly still and then they will show the dog inside the machine as uh, sights or smells or sounds and then they're able to look at the blood flow inside the brain to see which parts of the brain are lighting up and they give the owner's smell to the dogs and the, the sound of their owner to the dogs. And it lights up the same reward part of the brain that we have. So they they feel actual reward. They're more likely to release oxytocin, which is the tendon befriend hormone <laughs> or the cuddle hormone. So they hormone. do love us. So dogs actually, as far as we can tell, love let, us. Let me guess. There's no way to train a cat to you keep its head. I still looked in there. and I could not see <laughs> any videos of cats inside um, fMRI machines, and so we just don't know. Um, but yeah, so dogs prefer humans well, over other dogs. That could, if we could train Lena's cat to sit perfectly still in an MRI machine, we could show it pictures of different people it lives with, and we could determine and see which one was the favorite. One was the favorite. <laughs> but the, the fact that I the, think we all know. Yeah, that the it's fact not that Lena. Lena can't even get this cat to like her suggests that we won't be able to train it to sit in an fMRI machine. <laughs> that sounds uh, sounds like a fun experiment. So, um, on a slightly a small tangent, um, how should I don't know if you know about this? I'm kind of springing this on you. Should we really be worried about that parasite that's in cats? The toxoplasmosis. T- yes, is that something that uh, that like it's something that sounds like out of a horror movie to me. Yeah, it's hilarious. Is it um I can never remember if it's bacterial or fungal. Uh it's or that, is it single that, cell? It's single cell. Sing- okay, so single celled um organism toxoplasma, which infects so many animals. And its job is basically to get inside the brains of cats. And the way that it gets inside the brains of cats normally is if it finds itself in like a mouse, it will change the mouse's behavior in the brain of the mouse to make the mouse more likely to get eaten by a cat so that it can find itself in a cat again. And so the mouse, it will reverse the mouse's instinctive fear of cats to make the cat, to make the mouse walk up to a cat essentially and make it easier, like go eat me, eat me. Uh And we've now found it in a large percentage of humans there's toxoplasma, um, which gives toxoplasmosis. And there's now speculation as to whether this changes our own behavior to like cats. And because they found it more in women than they have in men, they wonder if it's part of the cat lady phenomenon. Oh. Yeah, so it could be. I mean, it's very unlikely, but it could be. A single cell parasite. The single cell parasite is changing our behavior to turn us into cat ladies so that we breed more cats so that this um, parasite has more cats to infect and become more (laughs) successful. Which is a frightening thought. I mean, there are so many brain altering parasites in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, There aren't, I mean, rabies, for example, alters your brain and it changes. So you're uh, scared of water so that you don't like sunlight. You have an increased sexual appetite. Um, Basically everything that vampires, I think that the story of vampires was based on the symptoms of rabies. I thought, I would think zombies would be stories of, of, of rabies. Zombies, yeah. Because it's like it, you get bit by something and then you kind of like, die and then you come you come back and you're like and rabies makes you more likely to bite other people you well. bite other people and then you transmit and then it's like and you're like yeah they you're think groaning and you're crazy yeah rabies uh, rabies is freaky have you seen it well not personally no, but like i saw right. i saw some videos and stuff uh, yeah no it's terrible and also so um the old name for it i think is hydrophobia because it tenses up the muscles in your throat when you try to swallow such that you just physically cannot swallow weird 
Yeah, it's so, and there are so many other ones. Like there's this fungus that infects ants. I was going to bring that one up, yeah. cordyceps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it makes them walk up to the top of um, trees and will uh, then grow this huge fungal stalk out and it go, takes them to the top of the trees rather than the ground floor where they live because that's then the spores can s spread for further from the top. I there are other, oh, I love, uh, I so parasitoids are parasites that feed on um, so like insects that live inside other insects. And there are so many parasitoid wasps that live inside caterpillars. So but baby butterflies. And they will lay their eggs inside a caterpillar. And there's a, a I don't know how they did it. They stuck a camera inside one of these caterpillars that have been got all these wasp larvae inside. And it eats it from the inside out alive, avoiding all of the organs that make it, um, that keep it alive so that they keep it alive for as long as possible, but eat out everything else, like the gut and everything. And then they change the brain of the caterpillar so that the caterpillar then um, produces a silk cocoon to protect the wasp larvae while they pupate. So, and then they finally eat the brain and burst out through the walls of this dying caterpillar. But the last thing that this dying caterpillar does is defend the wasps from like other cool. parasites it's by f thrashing around whenever it feels motion to make sure that the wasps themselves, even though it's kind of its dying body because it's had these things bursting out from its sides, like true alien style, and it will still protect what it has, what's eventually killed it. That's, it's that's an even so, more awful version than alien. I yeah, mean. it's so cool. And there are these long, I could go on for ages, but horsehair worms that infect crickets that make them like water, because normally they hate water and they jump into the water and then this huge, like meters long, but very thin worm will just ooze. Oh, I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah, YouTube, YouTube videos of that. Well, ooze out because it needs the water for the next stage of reproduction. Oh, there's so much I, cool stuff. I want to stay inside for the rest of my life now. I'm not going back outside. Well, that was a terrifying turn for uh, an episode about cats. So I hope you all sleep well tonight. Uh, if you have any future questions for us, just send them to sciencespot at roosterteeth.com. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.